Hey, Physics Peeps, this is a review for the Unit 3 test on momentum. So we're going to look at a problem, and there's a few things that you got to keep in mind. First of all, we'll look at the problem, that you, or a problem that's similar to what you'll be dealing with. Here it says, a car with a mass of 900 kilograms is traveling to the right with a speed of 20 meters per second. As I'm reading through this, I want to kind of make a picture in my head of what's going on. So I have a car that's going to the right with a speed of 20 meters per second. It collides with a truck with a mass of 1,500 kilograms. It was moving at five meters per second to the left. So <clears throat> I got a car coming one way. I got a truck coming the other way. And it says when they collide, they stick together. So they kind of get locked together. What is the velocity of the car and the truck stuck together? Okay. So this deals with momentum. Because things are colliding together, we say that momentum actually is conserved. Momentum that these two objects had before they collided is actually the same after they collided. And you'll have to excuse the noise in the background because they're cutting down a tree in our backyard. So, But <clears throat> when we solve it out, a few things. One, momentum. It has a particular equation to it, and it's this. But the P, the P is what stands for momentum. The M stands for mass, and the V stands for velocity. And the other thing that you got to keep in mind with this uh, equation is that velocity can be positive or negative. It can be positive when things are moving to the right. It can be negative when things are moving to the left. So you have to watch for that. But when we solve the problem, there's some steps that you got to take. So first, we're going to draw a picture of what's going on to help us understand what's happening. And then we got to write down what our rule is. What's actually going to happen with the momentum? We're going to show our work and kind of work down to our answer. Okay. So when we draw the picture, it's really showing what this car and truck are doing. But there's two things that's happening, really, because you have before they collide and after they collide. And that's going to be the thing that we got to keep track of. So before they collide, it just says that this car was going to the right, the truck was going to the left. So we draw that out. We got this car, it's going to the right, and we got this truck, do, do, do. it's going to the left. Afterwards, it says when they collide, they stick together. So after the collision, these two things are now locked together and stuck to one another. Okay? We don't know what's happening to their speed or things like that. Okay? But <clears throat> here's our picture. The rule, when we say that momentum is conserved, we are talking about the momentum of the car and the momentum of the truck before they collide is equal to the same thing, the momentum of the car and the momentum of the truck after. These numbers can be different on each side, but they have to add up to be the same number. So momentum of the car could be something plus something over here. These two numbers again can be different, but they have to add up to the same amount. Yeah. So that's kind of the rule. And when we show our work, this is what we do. Now we get into actually figuring out and doing our work. The momentum, we actually have to calculate because they don't tell us momentums up here in the uh, problem. So we have to calculate what it is using this equation. We need a mass and a velocity for each case to figure out the momentum. So this is kind of how it's done. So momentum of the car, we'll start with this. This is before they collide. And that's going to be important. I need to know what's happening before and what's happening after. Um, so for the momentum, I need the mass of the car. They say the mass of the car is 900 kilograms. So it's 900 kilograms times the velocity of the car. And it was going to the right at 20 meters per second. So it's times 20. Plus the momentum of the truck. For the momentum, I need the mass. But this time is for the truck. It says the truck has a mass of 1,500 kilograms. So 1,500 times the velocity of the truck. 
it was going five meters per second, but this time it's going to the left, and left means negative. So it's not just five, it's negative five. Equals momentum of the car. Now this is after they collide. So it's the mass of the car again, it's 900 kilograms. Times the velocity of the car. But now the velocity is not 20 anymore. The velocity is different now that they are stuck together. I don't know what it is, though. In fact, they're asking us, what is the velocity? So if I don't know what it is, I actually just put a V in its place. I'm going to solve for it. The truck, it still has a mass of 1,500 kilograms. But I also don't know the speed of it. It's not going 5 meters per second anymore. I have to solve for the speed afterwards. So I put a V in it, its place. So this is the big part. We draw our picture of what's going on. It helps us kind of understand what's happening. We write our rule. It's the momentum of each object um, before they collide equals the momentum of each object after they collide. And then I start putting my work in. I solve for the momentum of each uh, object. The mass time is its velocity. But I keep in mind of what's happening. If something's going to the right, I just keep it positive. If it's going to the left, though, I have to make it negative. And then if I don't know something, I just put a letter in for its space. Okay. Now that I have the hard part down, I can just go through and whittle through uh, the problem and <clears throat> or through the math and solve for it. So the first part I take 900 times 20, I get one or 18,000. Plus, I do the next part, 1,500 times negative 5, and I get negative 7,500. Equals. On this side, I can't multiply 900 in V. It's, I don't have a number there. I can't multiply 1,500 in V. But because I have a V in both spots, I can actually combine these. Because it's something like 4x plus 3x, I can make 7x. And you can do the same thing here. It's just bigger numbers. 900V and 1,500V, it becomes 2,400 times V. I just have to add them together. Okay? But it's just V afterwards. It's not 2V. It's not V squared. It's just V. Okay? Then I can <clears throat> go through and solve for V. So I can simplify this part. This comes out to be 10,500 equals, this just stays 2,400 times V. And then I solve for V by dividing by 2,400. If I take 10,500, divide by 2,400, I end up with this for my answer, 4.375. So sometimes your answer might come out to be negative. It just means that it's going to the left. If it comes out positive like this one, it means everything's still going to the right. Because this had way more momentum than the truck did. And it was heading to the right. So it's going to do that. Okay? But because I solved out for a speed, my unit is meters per second. And that's it. That's how I solve out that problem. So uh, good luck with this. See you guys there.